one of the things that was brought up earlier by some of our callers, some of the people that listen to our show is the reason why I think that they think that you might have had something to do with this is that at no time you have shown any emotion. What would you say to them for that? There's a, quite a few reasons why I don't. Like, I show emotion in my own home because I feel like either way I go, I can't win out of this situation. Like, if I cry, they're sick of me crying because they think that I'm guilty. If I don't cry, then I'm completely guilty and I'm showing no emotion. I'm not sympathetic, you know, I'm not remorseful, you know, all that stuff. And when I go out to actually talk to the camera crew, you know, people won't hear me correctly. I'm sorry that I don't cry or anything. I do that in my own home. The flies just started getting terrible. And they were landing on me. I was shaking them off. And then I saw them landing on the ground, down where the concrete had cracked from me uh, walking about. Well, I pushed my foot onto the cracks, and it went down and came right back up as if there was some kind of pressure beneath the concrete. I then proceeded to scrape the little chunks that had cracked off with my toe, and that's when a small area of skin was visible to both myself and my father. I didn't want it to be the child. Right now to John Stockwell with WJR News Talk 760. John, explain to me this most recent development that the killer apparently threw a used beer can onto the child's body in a, a show of complete disrespect and lack of remorse? Nancy, that is correct. That is now a source is saying that a beer can was found in this shallow grave. And while the killer may have done that to be disrespectful, police are hoping they may be able to get DNA or fingerprints off of it to give them a lead in this case. To Rupa Michelinani, there at the apartment complex where little Nevea went missing. Rupa, what more can you tell me? Well, Nancy, you know, it's the complex is a U-shaped parking lot in front of the apartment complex itself. You can actually see the parking lot very clearly from Jenny Buchanan's home where little Nevea was living. There's like blinds and you can look and you can watch. Now, here's what I can tell you. There, there are a couple of things, first of all. There was a beer can, we're, we are finding out that when the little, little Nevea's body was found, we're finding there was a beer can found in the shallow grave. I'm hearing this from both sides of the family. The police have indicated this. We're thinking that this beer can may have some DNA or fingerprints, and this is being fingerprinted and we're waiting for DNA evidence to come back. To Matt Zarell, our producer, also on the story. What more do you know, Matt? Well, tissue samples from the body have been sent to the lab. They're continuing to get, conduct tests. One thing that's interesting is experts are saying that because of the temperature outside and because the body may have been close to the water, that it's going to be trouble to determine. Hold on, Matt, Matt, Matt. Put your mic back on. Your, your mic fell off. Okay. Okay, hold on. While we're waiting on that, Mark Class, weigh in. Well, you know, I, I uh, think that, that Miss Buchanan has made some unforgivable mistakes probably that resulted in her little girl being kidnapped and murdered okay. by a remorseless psychopath. But I don't for a minute believe that the fact that she's not crying in public um, is any kind of an indication of her own guilt. I know no. that people respond very, very differently to, the, to these kinds of uh, tragic situations. Yeah, I agree with that. Whether she cries for a camera or not has nothing to do with what happened to the little girl. And, for all we know, George Kennedy, the sex offender boyfriend, didn't have anything to do with this. Uh, but not watching the child, Mark Class, not watching the child, that's the well, problem. That comes, yeah, and that comes right back to her, and that is truly the unforgivable mistake. Um, having that, allowing that little girl to be outside, unsupervised right. by herself, is, uh, is, is probably the, the first no-no of parenthood. To Matt Zarell. Go ahead, Matt. Okay, now experts are saying that determining cause of death is going to be difficult. They're saying this because of the weather and the fact that the body was close to the river. They're concerned that determining strangulation, drowning, or some of the other injuries are going to be very tough to determine, and decomposition is also going to be affected by this. Joining me now, Vince Velazquez, homicide detective and hostage negotiator. Vince, weigh in. What about the beer can? 
then that's a great piece of evidence. My only concern would be if this body was covered with concrete and the beer can was covered in the concrete, it would be great if the beer can was underneath her body. Uh, saliva from the opening of the can and prints would be the best piece of evidence that they could look for. To Dr. Michael Bell, Palm Beach County Chief Medical Examiner, Dr. Bell, uh, given the fact that we believe the body is decomposed, Nevaeh's little body, what do you believe is the most we can hope for uh, regarding getting forensic evidence from the body of the victim? Well, the, the body says decomposed, as everybody seems to be alluding to. I think getting any DNA is probably unlikely. Uh, maybe you get some hair, fibers, clove fibers, something like that, but uh, DNA, probably unlikely. To Dr. Janet Taylor, doctor and psychiatrist, Dr. Taylor, what can you tell me about the act of throwing a used beer can into the grave with the baby? First, Nancy, I have to thank you for hammering the, home, the fact that we cannot expose our children to sex offenders, boys or girls. But in terms of throwing the beer can, it just shows a, just lack of remorse and depravity and just, a, a, just no thought at all to this child and the act. Let's unleash the lawyers. Eleanor Dixon, Peter Odom, Hugo Rodriguez. Eleanor, weigh in. Well, Nancy, the thing that's so important about the mom's uh, story and what happened is we need a timeline because that's going to help narrow down what happened to Nevaeh. So to me, that's very important in this investigation and not to be overlooked. Peter Adam? Nancy, if mom's story is changing over time, it's not because anyone thinks that she has anything to do with this child's death, but probably because she's remorseful about the fact that she created the circumstances that led to this child's abduction. Rodriguez? She doesn't have a lawyer. She's been interviewed four or five times. They've downloaded all her computers. They've searched her house. Obviously, she's not a suspect. She's cooperating in her own way. Well, as a matter of fact, take a look at Jennifer Buchanan. Liz, could you roll that video after a few tough questions about exposing her child to a sex offender? This is what she and her good friend, Holly Howerton, decided to do. Rather than take your calls about her conduct live, this is their response. What's this? What's this documentary? Man, right here, this is my business.